together back to the moon and beyond. Artemis, named for the Greek goddess of the chase and death, was an early air-to-air -air missile project carried out by the Royal Aircraft Establishment beginning in late 1943. The missile was intended for radar-equipped night fighters like the Bristol Bowfighter, which would track the target on their AIMK ID radar and then fire at a set range, with the missile homing on the signal of the AI radar being reflected off the target. The concept for Artemis led from an earlier project, Spaniel, a surface-to-air missile based on the RP-3 rocket motor. During development, a variation known as Air Spaniel was considered which would use radio control for guidance. It was clear from early in the project that the six-second flight time would make such a system extremely difficult for the operator to correctly aim the missile in time, and the RAE decided that any such weapon had to be automatically guided. Artemis replaced the radio control system with a radio receiver to produce a simple form of semi-active radar homing that would guide it on a curving path to its target. The project was cancelled when it was seen that the RP-3-based rocket had too short a range to keep the fighter outside the bomber aircraft's defensive guns, especially during the period when the Luftwaffe was upgrading its aircraft with more powerful 20mm cannon. A larger design, Little Ben, took over development. There was a brief reprieve during the early stages of the B-1 flying bomb attacks in June 1944 as Artemis would allow slower aircraft to attack these weapons, but this was abandoned when radar-guided anti-aircraft guns and high-performance fighters proved effective. A small radio receiver tuned to the launch aircraft's AIMK. IV radar was mounted in the nose of the missile. It had a highly directional antenna that made it sensitive only to one side of the missile fuselage. As the missile spun, it would periodically receive the radar signal as the antenna rotated past the target. Every time a signal was seen, a small plate would be flipped into the airstream, pulling the nose in that direction. The guidance system was not particularly powerful as it only actively turned the missile toward the target during the short periods when it was visible to the antenna. To increase the amount of time that was so, the nose section was mounted on a spindle and allowed to rotate independently of the rocket body. Small fins along the base of the nose caused it to spin at a rapid speed. Venting the rocket exhaust from a small hole at the rear of the missile was also considered as an alternate to the plate, providing more turning force. Because of the directionality of the antenna, it did not receive any signal when the target was dead ahead. This had the advantage of preventing the aerodynamic plate from being constantly deployed as it approached a closer range. It also meant the missile should not be launched with the fighter pointed directly at the target, they would have to be positioned so that the reflection of their radar would be visible to one side at launch. Artemis would then follow a curving path toward the target.